Modern web applications are enabled by JavaScript running uh, and JavaScript responding to a couple of things. And so I kind of want to walk you through a classic example of how JavaScript is triggered, uh, what JavaScript can do when it starts to run, and then how JavaScript updates the user interface to allow you to understand what's happened. So let me uh, show you an example. So here's my, uh, my email inbox, um, and I'm going to hopefully not divulge any sort of personal information about myself. Uh, but here, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start by clicking Compose. So Gmail is an, is an example of a web application. So Gmail is a mail client. It runs in the browser. And it's largely powered by JavaScript that responds to things that happen on the page and allows me to interact with it almost like I would with the standalone app. OK, so what am I going to do? I'm going to click Compose. Now what Compose is going to do when I click Compose, there was just some JavaScript code that ran. And what that JavaScript code did is it rewrote the HTML contents of the web page to render this particular window that I am now going to interact with. So this window exists because I clicked on that, JavaScript ran, and then JavaScript um, modify the HTML contents of the page so that I have this interface now. So that's one of the classic ways that JavaScript works. When you click on a button, there's JavaScript code that runs. And the way that it modifies the interface is by, uh, in certain cases, generating. In certain cases, it just might have unhidden this. Maybe this window was hidden before, and it just removed it. It made it visible so I can see it now. So anyway, now, now I have this. Um, this message that I can start typing, and I'm going to send an email to Greg. Right? So, so again, what's happening here? Every time I type, there is a little piece of JavaScript code that's running. It may not be little. And what it's doing is it's looking at the input into this field, and it's figuring out based on my contacts who should I email. So it's bringing up a list of people whose name starts with Greg. I'm going uh, to email uh, my fav favorite videographer, Greg, and I'm going to send him um, information about cats, because I know he likes cats. So um, we're going to send the cat Wikipedia. Oh, there's actually a, um, let's see here. There's a great article about cats in the New York Times recently. Um, here we go. How cats evolved to win the internet. It's actually really good. He's already seen this. Um, OK, so I'm going to paste this in. And now, OK, so now you know, basically what I'm doing is just editing a text field. But when I go down here, now here, here, so here's the next thing. So I just want to point out all, all of this, anything where I click here is going to cause JavaScript to run. And something is going to happen. So JavaScript is how this stuff gets rendered. Um, but clearly, JavaScript is also required to send this message. So I'm going to click Send, um, OK? And then you see sending, your message has been sent. So what just happened? I clicked send. Obviously, that has to trigger some type of network activity. I have to send the message. So I have to send it to Gmail servers. Gmail is going to initiate the message transfer to Buffalo's email servers. And I think Greg just got the message with this awesome article about cats, which you should read again because it's really good. Um, but, but what else happened? So the other things that happened are that the UI was updated. So you notice there that it said sending for a little while. And that's because the message hadn't quite made it to Google servers. And now it says your message has been sent. Um, and it allows me to view the message. And if I go over here into my sent mail, you would see the message was there and things like this. So this is a classic, you know, this is the classic way that these apps work. They run JavaScript when you interact with them. And, and other times too, you know, you may have wondered how does, um, how does Gmail update your display when new messages come in? It's listening for new data from the server. And when it gets a new message, it automatically runs and updates the, the interface so that you can see it. So that's kind of cool. Um, but certainly, a lot of times when you interact with the page clicking on things, like if I went over here and clicked on one of my folders, um, that would cause JavaScript to run. JavaScript would figure out which messages would be displayed, update the HTML contents so that I could see those messages. So JavaScript runs when you interact with the page. It can update the contents of the page and the HTML that's displayed to show you what's going on. But it can also do things like interact with servers and other things that are required to do things like stream the music that you're trying to play, or in this case, send an email.